What's up guys, Riley here from Hudson Motors. Today is a very cool and exciting and special day, a day several months in the making. On today's episode, we are going over uh, our 1997 Ford F-250 that we gave away back in February. The winner's name is Jake. He lives in uh, Illinois, but he's a military guy. He's a military contractor and has been out of the country. And so while he's been out of the country, he wanted us to do a bunch of work to the truck that he won. So we picked him back in February and then we got to work doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. So he's coming in about an hour. Until he comes, we want to show you guys all the good stuff that we did to this. This truck in preparation for him and all the goodness that is this bad boy and then we've got some other fun stuff to show you outside but with that being said let's uh, let's hop into it and let's show you all the good stuff that we've done so this truck is a very cool truck we built this truck for us personally a couple years back and so we want to do like a flare side crew cab Ford never made a flare side bed on a crew cab OBS truck like this and so we thought it'd be cool to do the swap so we built this cool truck on 37s and then we gave it away. It, was, it, it is a very nice truck. It's a 460 gasser, four speed automatic. It's a great truck, a really good daily. We put thousands of miles on it over the last few years. Um, just driving it kind of like a, a just like a, a pickup truck, not like some, some classic that just sits in your garage. And then we kind of were just done with it. It was like, let's give it away. So uh, that was the leading up to Jake winning. Jake won the truck and, and uh, wanted to do a lot more to it and is really excited about it. So we got started on it. So let's walk around front and show you the biggest thing that we did to it first. So the biggest thing that Jake wanted done to this truck was he wanted to solid axle swap it. The truck was a twin traction beam front end, so F-250 OBS traction beam front, act, front axles are really crappy. So we found a Medina 60 out of this same era OBS Ford. So, so if you don't know, OBS Fords are generally considered 1992 to 1997, but you can make the argument that it goes from 1980 all the way up to 1997. Uh, but out of this 92 to 97 era Ford in the F350 series, you've got a solid axle truck. And in the F250, you got the twin traction beam truck. And so this is an F250, but he wanted that solid axle out of an F350, but you still maintain that short bed pickup. So we found a Medina 60. Um, my buddy Garrett, who runs an Instagram called Born for Adventure, he sells a bunch of these Dana 60s all over the nation. And so he found me this Dana 60. Uh, we rebuilt it, did a whole bunch of new seals, new bearings. Uh, the differential was fine, didn't need replaced, so it's got the same uh, 410 diff in the front. Uh, but we did a whole bunch of work down to it. Uh, did a nice Yukon front diff cover, but we did all new steering and suspension linkage. So that's all nice new Moog parts. So drag link, tie rod, tie rod ends. Uh, and then we did uh, stock F350 springs with a shackle reversal from Skies Off-Road. We've done this on a bunch of different trucks. It's a great setup. It makes your leaf sprung truck ride really, really, really well. Not as good as a coil sprung truck, I'm not gonna lie to anybody, but for the money that you spend to swap to coil springs, it's not gonna be better. You're not gonna get that much better of a ride for the crazy amount more money that you're spent over this setup here. It rides great, especially with the Bilstein shocks. It is, it is an absolute joy to drive. It rides super, super, super good now. Way better than the four inch lift springs that were on here with the twin traction beam. So, Rides great, steers great, steers perfectly down the road. No steering stabilizer needed, no death wobble, no nothing. It just is an absolute joy to drive. And that solid axle looks way beefier and way cooler. For any of those interested, when you do this swap from a traction beam truck to a solid axle swap and you do the shackle reversal, this is the two inch shackle reversal from Skies Off Road. This gives you five and a half inches of lift. So it cleared the 37s just absolutely perfectly with no other modification, no other lift needed to continue to clear the 37s. So you're getting factory F-350 leaf springs, so a factory ride, but still clear 37s. Uh, this truck already had this bumper on it when we gave it away. However, Jake didn't like kind of how big and beefy it was with the roll bar, with the, with the brush guard and everything. So we chopped the brush guard, we cut the bumper down, we sucked the bumper up tighter underneath it. We put a winch on the front, so this is a, this is Smitty built uh, 12,000 pound uh, synthetic rope winch um, that we did in here. So this is really cool, nice and hidden. Did the cable release with a nice little like recess part. So the only thing that sticks up above the, the bumper is just the cable release, which I think is pretty trick. Jake wanted to be able to drive this thing. He plans on going off-roading and camping. He's a big camping guy. He's got his animal, his dogs and everything like that. So he wants to go camping a bunch, but he wants a lot of light. So we did new three inch uh, projector housings from Morimoto in here. So. Did the projector housings with little LED halos up front. They're really, really, really cool. The problem with these OBS trucks is that their halogen headlight setup is the worst. It is so dim. And so running these projectors makes it absolutely capable of seeing at nighttime. Then you have your fogs and your ambers down in the bumper, which will make it all good and dandy. So in the front end, that's all we did. We did a lot of wiring cleanup as well um, underneath the hood to make it just nice and pretty. New battery with side posts for his, for his winch and all that kind of stuff as well. So I'm stoked on how the bumper came out and super stoked on the axle. It is just freaking, it's great. Uh, coming down the side here, you'll see his uh, spare tire. He wanted a spare tire in the bed, so we stood up a spare tire. 
Uh, I think it's a cool look, looks really retro as well. Um, and then he, because again, he's gonna go camping all the time, he wanted some things to make it nicer while he's out and about camping, and it's the ability to have some air tools. So underneath here, you might not be able to see it, but down here we've got our nice little tray that we built. So we built him a nice little uh, tray to hide his air compressor and air tank up underneath the frame. It's tucked in there nice and tight, nice and secure and sturdy, so it's not going anywhere. And then his air hose is in his front filler door. There's his air hose. You got your quick disconnect on there. You put your extra air hose on it, and then when you're done, it just slips back up in there. And you'll never know, so it's nice and well hidden. As far as anything else we did on the exterior, just some the same building shocks in the rear and that's it. But we did a lot of work as well to continue to make his interior nicer. So on the inside, uh, he wanted to reupholster his seats. He didn't want the cloth seats, even though the cloth seats were in perfect condition. He wanted some nice vinyl or leather seats. We did some gray vinyl seats. Ian's Auto, uh, our friends over at Ian's, they did it, did a really good job. Nice factory looking upholstery setup on there, but it's really nice and really comfortable, so that's sweet. Um, and then he wanted to do some other modifications. So on our, our media panel that we had, where we have our switch panel down there, we added his air gauge for his air compressor tank. And then he wanted, what it was a big deal for him was he wanted to have a nice, nice, nice sound system. So we did all new premium speakers all around. So door, six and a half doors and four by sixes in the rear. And then he, we did a 10 inch subwoofer with a nice big amp to power it all in the back. So it sounds really, really good with the sound system. And that was a, that was a, a fun thing I did with my little brother. My little brother, Hunter, is a audiophile and so it's fun to do that with him as well. One more thing, in the back here in the back. Just thinking now, what all did we do? Uh, and then the last thing that we did for him, again, rear bench seat again, is also upholstered to match as well. And then back here underneath the seat, if you'll look down there, we put a power inverter underneath the seat. You can't see it from this side, it's nice and hidden. But if you reach underneath the seat, there's a power inverter, so you can have 120 volt and plug in your, all your accessories while he's out camping, stuff like that, run a microwave off it, all that kind of good stuff. So that's under the seat as well. And uh, it all works perfect. So uh, it's exciting and he's about ready to show up. So it came out really, really cool. We're stoked on it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get him ready to go. All right, so before Jake comes to get his truck, uh, let's walk outside and show you something else that we just picked up, a future giveaway truck, something really exciting, and uh, let's go walk that over, so come on out there. This is our next Chevy giveaway truck. This is a 1969 Chevy Suburban, and uh, it's pretty cool, but you might be thinking, this doesn't look quite like what you guys would give away, and uh, you know, you're, you're probably right, but we're gonna do a lot of work to this thing, so let's walk around and show you what's good about it. So just off the bat, you can see it doesn't look terrible from 10 feet away, however, it's got some goofiness going on. There's a lot of good here. There's a lot of potential and I'm always buying trucks based on the potential of what the truck could be. This was a, a truck that I picked up out of Fallon, Nevada, just out of Northern Nevada and uh, brought it down back down here to Las Vegas. Yeah, we're gonna make this thing into a freaking rad four wheel drive diesel swap suburban. So let's go around and show you all the goodness. First things first, the paint would have been perfectly fine. Like, however, the previous owner decided that after they painted this truck, they were gonna go through and sand it to try and make it look like patina, uh, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. So the truck is gonna have to get repainted and that sucks because if they would have just left it alone, it would have been just totally fine. However, you know, it's it's been sanded. So not the end of the world. We'll just have to repaint the truck and do something cool. I like the baby blue though. And I think I watched we'll it. We might actually keep it baby blue, but uh, yeah, that's a little goofy. Um, you'll notice that this front wheel is not centered in this fender well. You might be thinking, what the heck's going on there? That's because this truck is sitting on a 1995 Dodge 2500 chassis. So with that being said, this is the whole reason why I bought the truck is because of the chassis that it's sitting on. It comes with a 12 valve P-Pump Cummins. So there's some goofiness going on here as well. However, this truck runs and drives like an absolute bat out of hell. It's fast, it builds boost, it makes freaking whooshing noises and turbo flutter when you let off the throttle, it's really cool, so. P-Pump 12 valve, really, really, really rad, in really great shape, runs and drives excellently. There's some goofiness going on here, some goofiness with the wiring, blue loom, all that kind of good stuff that we're gonna go through and redo. We'll take out this factory wiring harness. Um, this has a 47 RE transmission in it right now, uh, but two-wheel drive, and we're gonna make this truck four-wheel drive down the road, so that's gonna have to go away, so we'll do a new transmission controller, all that kind of good stuff. Here on the, on the core support, they built this nice little aluminum, you know, fascia plate to show who built the truck. Um, so a bunch of people apparently were part of the build. The, their last name is Chain. Um, I didn't buy it from the Chains. I bought it from a, from a guy who bought, must have bought it from the Chains or from somebody else. I don't know when the Chains owned this, but I apologize to them. As cool as it is to know who their names are, I think we're just gonna take these panels off and save them and put new panels in um, or just rip off. This is just vinyl lettering, but it's a little too goofy for my taste, but um, well, maybe we'll just pull them off and save them for those guys. They're like, oh man, you know, that was my truck and do you still have those panels? And so yeah, we got them for you here. So the fun thing about classics is you get to continue on someone else's project. These trucks are never done, they're never finished. You're always building on someone else's progress. And so 
I don't want to like erase that, but that's kind of is what it is. But again, Peep Hope Cummins, it's the whole money maker right there for sure. It's great, runs drives excellently, and so because of this, I was able to overlook all the other little issues that she might have. Front, she's got a, like a front roll pan, which I think is ugly, so we're gonna ditch the roll pan and go to a big bumper and all that kind of stuff, put a winch on it, all that kind of goodness. Obviously, these chrome wheels, these are gonna go away because that's just terribly nasty. Now, you might notice behind the truck back there, let's take a minute in this vlog. Today is uh, May 19th. You might see the Comanche back there. We gave away that Comanche back in March of 2023. Land in the winter, that is a student up at uh, Dixie State in St. George, Utah. Uh, his semester at school ends in a week. And so his parents were like, hey, can we bring the Comanche down? Have you do some more stuff to it? We want to do a bed liner and fix some other little dingleberries. And I was like, sure, bring it on down. So it's down here just for a couple little things and a bed liner. And then when he's coming back home at the end of his semester, he's going to pick it up. So I know someone in there's going to be like, why is the Comanche there? You know, and, and I understand. We, it's weird to have the giveaway truck back here, but that's why. So we're just doing a couple little things and he's gonna pick it up on his way home from school. So back to the back to our regular programming here. So yes, we're gonna ditch these chrome wheels and these street tires. We'll do something cool. This is, I think this is gonna be more of a retro build like our uh, 72 F100 back there. So we're gonna probably keep it chrome or if we're gonna do something, I think we're gonna do maybe like some some light gunmetal gray powder coat, something like that. So maybe something to change it up, but I don't want to do a whole blacked out build, kind of like on a Ram Charger and stuff like that. I'm uh, coming down the side. The truck is very complete though, with all the tram, like all the mirrors, all that kind of good stuff. There's some goofiness going on here. They put a fuel filler neck here on the body. It's a three-door Suburban. These, these Suburbans fr from 67 to 72, these Suburbans were three doors. And so here, like right where the fourth door would have been or in the third door section, they put a fuel filler neck right here and I didn't quite understand why when I was trying to buy it from the guy, I couldn't get an answer from him. They delete and they just put a filler plate over the factory fuel filler neck. Come to find out that the bench seat in the rear is sitting on a new gas tank. So there's a fuel tank inside the cab. That doesn't make any sense to me. But however, when this truck gets lifted up, there's gonna be plenty of space underneath the bed to build a fuel cell. So that's what we'll do. We'll just build a fuel cell, put it back underneath the truck and uh, be done. Not trying to do anything crazy. So we'll ditch this, weld this up and put the fuel filler neck back in its factory location. Now, if you look inside the window, I've already started hoarding some parts here. Inside the window, there you see a very nice, already resealed and repainted Kingpin Dana 60. This is like, uh, this is again an eight on six and a half front axle, 410 gear ratio out of like an 80s or 90s Ford. It's the best front axle to swap into these old classic trucks, one of the best. And so we're gonna swap that in. It's gonna be really freaking cool. So it'll match up with the 410 gear ratio on the Dana 60 in the rear. So we'll have Dana 60 front and rear. It'll be super cool. And we're stoked about that as well. So I've already got that axle set aside, sitting inside the cab, just ready for it. It's not sagging the, the suspension because right now the suspension is sitting down on the bump stops. So there is no rear suspension, so it doesn't even matter. It's just a nice little storage box for now. Coming around the back side, you'll see down here we got a fair amount of Bondo. Let's zoom in on that garbage. I, I want to show you guys. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty. You know, that's all Bondo. So we're gonna go ahead and replace these caps and, and weld those in. The truck is rust free, so I don't know if it just got munched or what happened back there and they just bondoed it, but like there is no rust in the cab. I don't know why, but so that's just rusty and nasty. We're gonna replace that so that it doesn't look like absolute garbage. In the back though, you've got those barn doors, which are super cool. The upholstery is decent, carpet's good. Like front seat is reupholstered already. So we're gonna reupholster the, the back seat and then I think the door panels, it's got that aftermarket but factory style like paisley interior which i don't like because the front seat's houndstooth and i like houndstooth a lot so we'll do all these door panels panels in the houndstooth to match the front we'll show you in a second one but as far as the truck goes with all that kind of good stuff that's 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 the exterior it's rough it needs a lot of work we're going to give it the love that she that she needs and that she deserves so let's come up front and let me show you some stuff up here Okay, up here, we're gonna notice a little bit of goofiness. You got this little kill switch. This is this is one of those things that's gonna have to go away whenever they built this thing. They decided, well, let's just put a kill switch in, and, but not put the key. The key doesn't do anything besides start the engine. Uh, the kill switch is what kills the, the, the wiring harness, so that's gonna get changed, obviously. That's just a real big dingleberry. But again, somebody was building this out of the garage and doing the best they can. Props to them for making it work. So with that on, your headlights like automatically turn on, your running daylights turn on, all that kind of stuff. But again, it's in good shape. Like everything's there, needs a radio, needs air conditioning. Um, but like the bench sheet is in good shape. It's already been reupholstered. Uh, we can use these headlighter panels to reupholster over the top of them or use them as a template. Um, so that's all good. In here, again, the real money maker is the fact that she's got that Cummins. She starts up and she's not that loud, but she sounds great. She sounds really good. And uh, she's just pretty rad. But here's the funniest little dingleberry on the whole truck, is to kill the thing, you grab this knob here, like a choke knob, and uh, 
you have a mechanical fuel shutoff on the dash there, which is, that's got to be the biggest dingleberry on the whole entire thing. So again, you get out, you flip your switch back off, and then it's done, and you're not killing your battery. Speaking of batteries, if you look down here, you just got the batteries hanging down low, down underneath the cab. That's got to go away as well. We'll put those batteries into the engine bay where they belong. I don't like hidden batteries. They're cool when you're building a million dollar hot rod, but if you're building a truck to use, put your batteries under the hood, people. Like, just do it. So. Lots of stuff to clean up, but it's a great start and we're gonna make it really, really, really freaking cool and there'll be a rad, rad, rad giveaway. So I'm excited about it, we're stoked, it'll be really cool. Let's go drive it. So when I bought it and it came off the trailer, I was like, crap, I done played myself. Truck's kind of a piece of crap, needs a lot of work. And I was like, dang, that kind of sucks. But then I drove it and it made that sound. And I was like, all right, I'm in, I'm sold, I love it. I'm stoked about it. So, uh, you know, bought it. We're here now. We're stuck. We're gonna make it cool. We're gonna make it nice, and uh, that's all that matters. It needs a lot of work, but again, it runs and drives really freaking good. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna have a good time with it. So, buying off of what can be, not what is, you know. So, let's cruise back to the shop. Jake's on his way. Uh, let's go get everything ready for him and get everything started and. Uh, He'll be here shortly, and then we're gonna take off, and and he's gonna take his truck and fly up, uh, not fly, he's gonna drive it actually all the way back to Illinois. So he's our second Illinois winner, and uh, which was crazy, but he's a, you know, Jake's a military guy. He, he lives all over the all over the world. For now, let's park this thing, and let's uh, let's go get ready for Jake. All right. So uh, with that being said, we're hoping to have this giveaway launched later this year in the fall of 2023. Um, we'll see how that goes, you know, how builds go. They always take a little bit longer than you expect, but we're hoping to have this one ready for September, October in 2023. And uh, yeah, so, so look out for that one. Hey right, guys, this is Jake. He just flew in. We're gonna pop the garage open and show him the truck and go for some spins. So, but uh, before we get going, are you stoked? I'm almost shaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. It's been a long time coming. We called you back in February. A couple months. Yep, and then we've done a bunch of stuff to it and it's time to get going. Absolutely amazing. It's pretty sick, huh? I'm stoked. Yeah. I'm stoked. It's better in person. This truck totally is better in person. It's amazing, man. Thank you so much. I'm gonna see how she sounds. impressions from this two mile drive. Amazing, man. You loving on it? Yeah, I'm loving it. So, okay, Jake, so uh, drove it around the block, did a couple miles there, what'd you think? Incredible, guys. Front axle swap was incredible. It was nice and smooth. 460's great. Say what you want about it, but it's plenty for a truck. Truck rides amazing. I can't wait to get it out on the trail. You happy? Take it out. Yeah, I'm stoked, man. Good, I'm can't stoked. Wait. So, I'm Jake Lavis. I won this badass F-250 from Hudson Motors by finding them online through Facebook. I saw a picture of a Dodge Crew Cab. I wondered who built this truck. Started following Hudson Motors. Saw that they give away trucks by purchasing their gear. So I bought a couple lights and uh, now I'm going home with this. All right, dude. It's dope. Thank you so much, guys. No, thank you. Thank you. I've had that truck for so long. It's crazy. Peace out. We really have had that truck for how long, Jaime? Four years, five years we've had that truck? Yeah, man. It's crazy, it's a surreal feeling. But what a great winner. Okay, he's super cool, he's super nice. Good customer, loves the truck. I'm stoked that he loves it too, man. Stoked that he's into the truck, so there we go. Okay, and just like that, another winner coming out, picking up their truck. That they won for buying, yeah, he bought some of those Omni 3K work lights. So, bought some lights, won the truck, and then turned it into an awesome customer and wanted to do a bunch of other cool stuff. So, we're stoked about it. Stoked to see his progress as he drives home. So, uh, 
with that, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of the vlog. Uh, Suburban, again, we'll, you, we'll, you'll see a lot of progress on that truck as the build goes on. And uh, if you're not subscribed so far here on your YouTube, subscribe to our channel. See all the progress and all the updates on future giveaway trucks. And uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram as well, where we post a lot there about the trucks and the giveaways and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, maybe you could be next, just like Jake, and be driving home a truck, you know, just as cool as his. So again, we appreciate it. Thanks guys, we'll catch you on the next one.